For a story to be truly interesting, I've always found that the most important element of that story should always be the characters. A somewhat ordinary setting has the potential to be the environment for a breathtaking and exciting series of events, but for that to be possible, there needs to be something to drive it in that direction, and more often than not, that something is a someone. A hero maybe, a protagonist, a character with depth, who provides meaning to a story with their often altruistic approach to different situations. A fleshed out protagonist with goals and morals gives a story substance, but for the presence of a protagonist to truly mean something within the confines of a story, there must be a force or an identity that opposes them. A protagonist is nothing without an antagonist. A protagonist or a hero loses much of their credibility when the presence of an evil does not exist. There's nothing to oppose, nothing to prevent. No opportunities for the protagonist to show the extent of their goals and beliefs. So when it comes to characters that provide a story with what it needs to grip us, it's clear that an antagonist is just as, if not more important. Just like a protagonist, an antagonist needs depth and evolution. An antagonist needs weaknesses and purpose. A bottomless evil is never as interesting as a villain with their own set of morals. When I first played Red Dead Redemption, I got what I now consider as a brief introduction to a prime example of this. But after experiencing the detail and context behind such a character in Red Dead Redemption 2, it's now clear to me that Dutch Vanderland is by far Rockstar's greatest antagonist. Dutch Vanderlyn is a character who initially comes across as bad for the right reasons. A rebel with a cause, comparable to Robin Hood in many aspects. A man who is seemingly obsessed with liberty, loyalty, equality, cultural tolerance, and above all, the preservation of natural law. All of these things remain important to Dutch despite his eventual transformation as a character. These values bleed into everything that he's involved in from his crimes as an outlaw to the gang and family that he leads. If nothing else, Dutch can immediately be portrayed as unrelentingly determined. Determined to uphold his beliefs and carry them with him into the new world, even if his plans involve grinding that new world to a stop and preserving the practices of the Old West. As I mentioned previously, Dutch's primary obsession is the preservation of natural law. Natural law being the foundation of the Old West, living in a hunter-gatherer society that places survival above innovation, technology, and modern civilization. Dutch Vanderlyn's sole purpose is to continue living in a non-industrialized world that isn't controlled by the government. A world that allows people to live as they decide. A society where survival is the primary focus, and an environment that ultimately rewards the principles of the hard-working. These goals and focuses are so important to Dutch that being a merciless killer in his eyes is justifiable. He'll do anything to carry himself and the gang into his ideal society, and his ideas are often backed by those around him. Dutch Vanderlyn's constant pursuit of these ideas leads to thievery, murder, and many other crimes, but this isn't exactly what makes him Red Dead Redemption 2's antagonist. And more importantly, 
This isn't what makes him Rockstar's greatest antagonist. In fact, his motivations and justifications for what he does are quite typical of a violent antagonist, doing anything and everything in their power to get what they want, no matter who gets affected in the process. Now, if this is all that his character had to offer, I wouldn't be making this video, mainly because this is merely the shell of Dutch Vanderland, and although his core motivations remain the same no matter what, it's the slow burning downfall of his plans that reveal his true nature. Once his moral complexities are uncovered, we get an antagonist that is both intriguing and often quite confusing. In my video about Rockstar's greatest protagonist, Arthur Morgan, I explained Rockstar's focus on creating characters that aren't two-dimensional. Characters that are human. Characters that think and feel and change. Characters who are actually influenced by the things that happen to them. And while Dutch Vanderland is a great example of this, the way he evolves is approached quite differently to that of other Rockstar antagonists. Let's not forget that for the majority of the game, Dutch is on our side. He leads the side that the good guys are on. His methods are definitely questionable, but we're placed in a position that has us believe his intentions are good, nobly even. We're in a position to believe that it's the Pinkertons and the government that are evil. They're the bad guys. They're the ones in the way of everything that Dutch stands for and everything that Dutch is trying to build and preserve. If a tragedy occurs that affects the gang, it's the Pinkertons' fault for getting in the way of Dutch's plans. Now characters such as Andrew Milton are definitely antagonists too. The Pinkertons do some horribly corrupt things in both Red Dead games as a means of capturing Dutch, but Dutch is definitely a different kind of evil and that's what makes him interesting. To understand exactly what it is that sets Dutch apart from other Rockstar antagonists, it's important to take a look at what turns Dutch from a trusted leader of the gang to an unhinged lunatic without a plan. And the answer is quite simple. Dutch doesn't undergo a moral transformation when things begin to turn sour. He's been that way the entire time. His actions haven't ever been driven by the people around him, but have instead been driven by his ego. He eventually convinces himself that he's invincible and that he can do no wrong. He does absolutely everything he can to convince those around him that what he preaches as a leader will come to fruition. And no, this isn't to reassure the gang that everything is going to be okay, but more to reassure himself that he's in control. He does everything he can to avoid his failures, because remaining ignorant to his shortcomings is better than a battered ego. Dutch is a damaged antagonist with a raging god complex. If it means keeping up the facade that he knows what he's doing, the lives of the people he's supposed to care about don't seem to matter to him. If it means his ego will be challenged, then his family is disposable. We see extreme examples of this in the late stages of Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's not a coincidence that Dutch is at his worst when it seems as though everybody has lost faith in him. He leaves John to die and has no problem with lying to everyone about what exactly occurred. Even though he raised John, if it meant keeping his image intact, everything they've been through together becomes irrelevant. This can be seen in full force when he betrays Arthur and sides with Micah. Arthur is one of Dutch's closest and most trusted allies for many, many years, and despite a defeated Arthur's attempts to level with an unhinged Dutch, he refuses to accept his wrongdoings. Dutch is clearly upset when confronted by Arthur, but surprisingly enough, he seems more concerned with the fact that he's failed himself, not anybody else. And evidently, Dutch doesn't like having a bruised ego. Despite everything they've been through, and everything that they've fought for, he still leaves Arthur to die, and we later learn that he decides to reunite with Micah. Dutch's attachment to Micah is a very unique element in terms of who he is as an antagonist. When an antagonist is represented the way that Dutch is, a stubborn and impulsive leader, it's not often we see them hopelessly cling to anything they can. What makes Dutch different in this case is that he can't operate alone, or at least, he really doesn't want to. He refuses to accept that it's over. He refuses to accept that, by the end, he made mistakes that compromised what he was fighting for. Dutch is so at war with the idea of failing and tarnishing his ego, that he blindly charges forward into what he perceives as the next phase of his plan. And in the end of Red Dead 2, this comes in the form of his attachment to Micah. Despite the fact that he knows Micah is a rat after being told by Arthur, he would much rather side with Micah and continue on as if nothing happened. That way he can avoid accepting that he wrongly trusted him in the first place. 
Scotch takes to Micah because Micah knew early on exactly how to manipulate him. Throughout the entirety of Red Dead 2, Micah acted as a yes man for Dutch, which once again fueled Dutch's blazing ego. So once the ship began to sink, it's no surprise that Dutch clung to Micah the way he did. It's all he had left in terms of people that believed in his direction anymore. On surface level, it's a win-win for Dutch, but deep down he knows that it isn't like that at all. He failed. It's his fault. He's being used, but he doesn't want to accept it. Earlier in the video I mentioned that once Dutch's moral complexities were uncovered, we would get an insight into an antagonist that is both intriguing and confusing. Now obviously Dutch is an intriguing character from the beginning, as we get a taste of his goals and his beliefs and how he goes about chasing and enforcing them. But what makes Dutch Rockstar's greatest antagonist lies within just how confusing some of his decisions are when everything is said and done. His decisions might not immediately make sense, as they aren't typical of the man we've gotten to know. This is because his decisions are the result of a man coming to terms with the fact that he isn't the god he thought himself to be. He is an invincible. He is an unstoppable. He can't change the course of society the way he thought he could. In a way, he loses something that he's always sworn by, which is hope. We see crystal clear examples of this in two of the last encounters that Dutch has with John. The son that he betrayed, the friend that he abandoned. When John goes to confront Micah, we discover that Dutch has clung to him the same way that I mentioned before. A standoff between the three of them pits Dutch in probably his most difficult position of all. Shoot John and continue trying to live the lie he's been holding onto for so long, or shoot Micah and let go. Accept to himself that he's done wrong, accept that he's at fault. Sacrifice his ego and come to terms with the fact that he's just a man, a heavily flawed man, not a god with a plan for every given situation who is absolved of his mistakes. Shooting Micah meant a lot more for Dutch's character than simply saving John's life. He didn't save John as a means of redemption, he saved John so he could save himself. Dutch already knew that he'd lost sight of what he was actually fighting for. It's just that now, he could begrudgingly accept it. The final time that we see Dutch is years later, John's final confrontation with the man who raised him. It's also here that we see the end of Rockstar's greatest antagonist, in a moment of reflection and acceptance. This scene from the first Red Dead Redemption holds a lot more weight after the context that Red Dead 2 provides us is considered. After everything, Dutch finally puts his ego aside and voices his reality. He finally states that you can't fight nature, and he admits that fighting his own nature would be impossible. He reflects on his unrelenting determination to accomplish his goals, and also states the elements of his ideas that he still believes in. Dutch's final words say everything that needs to be said about the progression of his character. The antagonist who provoked his own evil and who refused to accept his own faults admits that his time has passed. This is what makes Dutch Vanderland Rockstar's greatest antagonist. Rockstar has never created a villain with more depth or complexity to their character, and Dutch's final moments across both games provide us with such a personal insight into just how he's thinking and feeling. It's obvious that his acceptance doesn't redeem him for the evil things that he's done, but we don't often see an antagonist find peace within themselves when everything they've fought for fails. Dutch might have been striving for more noble things in the beginning, but the ego that was created under the pressure to be invincible slowly changed him for the worst.